Welcome to the Athenia's Last Voyage Crowdfund. I'm David S. Dawson, associate producer on the documentary. And today I'm going to be chatting with Heather Watts. Heather was a three-year-old traveling home to Canada with her mother aboard the Athenia when their ship was torpedoed. As an adult, Heather's become more interested in the sinking, and she's done quite a bit of research on the subject and has given talks about her and her mother's experiences. So we're going to bring her on to talk a little bit about those experiences and a little bit about the Athenia. Heather, welcome. Hello, David. Thank you for joining us. So as a three-year-old, do you have any like vivid memories of the sinking? Very few. I think most people's memories don't start until they're about three. And I was just a couple of weeks short of my third birthday. So wow. I have very few memories. And they, they tend to be when I was separated from my mother, and therefore, I suppose, frightened. Um, right. I, I can remember, the first one that I truly remember is uh, took place on the British destroyer that rescued us from the lifeboats right at the end of the experience. Uh, there was a sailor that took me up in a rope sling and brought me onto the, the destroyer and took me down to where eventually the adults joined us but he had a black beard and i really remember that i, I don't <laughs> think i had ever seen a man with a beard before and i'm sure i was scared uh, later on i also remember when he brought me back down to where my mother was seating seated on, on behind a very wide table and he set me on the table and i walked across it to where my mother was and um, I'd never been allowed to walk on tables, so I, I guess that's why I remember that. But <laughs> those are very minor things. I don't remember any of the frightening bits. Yeah. I, I think the reason for that is that my mother was, made her object for the whole 11 hours that we were in the lifeboat that I would not be frightened, that, that she would make it as, she would reassure me as much as she could. And she must have done a very good job. I, I know she told me we we sat and we looked at the stars, the, the, the huge sky full of stars. And, and um, I'm sure we talked about that bedtime story that she had been reading me when the torpedo struck. Yeah, we never could remember what the story was, and that was a, a tremendous disappointment to me. I would have loved to have been able to read that to my children. <laughs> uh, what made you want to learn more about the Athenia and share that knowledge with with people? I mean, you were just about three when it happened, so you yeah. don't have a tremendous amount of memories. Was was there was there kind of a, an emotional echo of that with your mother? Well. I, I wasn't living near my mother at the time, but we, we corresponded a lot when I was grown up. And um, I guess it was because I, I remembered so little about it and it was part of my life and I really felt I ought to know what had happened. So I kept asking her, would she please write it down for me? And this, she would always say, yes, yes, she definitely would, but she never did. And mm. I, I gradually began to realize it upset her so much to think about it and bring back all the experiences of that night that she just couldn't quite gear herself up to do that. So one time when she was visiting us in Halifax, um, I, I got a tape recorder and I just set it on the living room table and said, now I'm going to ask you some questions about the Athena. Do you mind answering me? Oh, no, she would be happy to do that. Well, she just got started and it the whole story just poured out of her and had our whole personal story on tape. And that, that was really wonderful because it was so detailed and it was so personal and it filled in all the gaps for me. Um, but I also, as an adult, started reading more. I, I started trying to find in historic histories of the war whether the Athenian was mentioned, learned a few things about that. Because I wanted my children and grandchildren to know that this wasn't just an exciting story that had happened to their grandmother and great-grandmother, but, um, but it, it, it was... Uh, it, it, the the effect of this that it had this experience on 
so many other hundred people, over a hundred people died in that event. They were innocent civilians. They had nothing to do with the war. The whole thing was mistaken identity on the part of the U-boat captain. And right. it should never have happened. So I thought I really, people have to know what war does to even people that are not formally involved in it. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a real cautionary tale of the Indeed. Of the kind of incidental casualties to war, right? Like yes, I, the people I, who I, get sucked in who shouldn't be. I just hope that people would begin to realize that, that war is not the way to solve disputes and that we have to somehow find another way. Right. So that's added to the personal story. That was what I would talk about if I when I gave talks of, about well, I, the, the sinking to others. I think it's a wonderful gift that you were able to get that recording with your mother. And, and it's a, a gift to the world that you're sharing that story and that you're also an active participant in trying to preserve the history of the Athena. And I thank you for your involvement in this documentary as well. And thank I thank you, the viewers, for tuning in to our crowdfund and for showing your interest in Athena's Last Voyage. I would encourage you to contribute to the crowdfund to try and help us get the documentary all the way to the finish line and to distribution. And if you can't contribute financially, hopefully you can contribute by sharing the message with your social networks. Heather, thank you so much for communicating with us today about your experience and, and your mother's experience. And uh, I hope that uh, I hope that this has been a help and that uh, it encourages people to contribute to the documentary. I hope so too. Thank you. <laughs>